everyone, it's Lisa from the blog at farmhouseonboom.com and today I am going to share with you some of the items from my cozy winter menu. When I think of winter, I think of soups, I think we all do, many variations of soups. I have a couple spins today for you on soup, homemade breads, pastas, and then I'm also going to talk a little bit about a sheet pan dinner. But what I like about all of these recipes is you can take the idea and just vary it by different kinds of soups, different kinds of sheet pans, different kinds of pastas and homemade breads. These are the kind of recipes that I rely on over and over again here in the farmhouse. I have a whole collection of recipes over on the blog that you can visit at farmhousehambun.com. Now the first thing I'm doing today is getting some bread dough going for something that I'm going to do tomorrow. So I mixed up my no need recipe. I'm letting that auto lice while I start working on today's dinner. Vegetables like sweet potatoes make a lot of appearances in our winter menu and today is no exception. I'm going to be doing a sheet pan dinner here with some chicken from my sister's farm, some fresh sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, onions that I'm going to chop kind of coarse so that way they cook at the same speed as the sweet potatoes and chicken which will take quite a while. I like dinners like this because obviously they are easy. They take less dishes, less time, basically cut everything up, throw it on a pan, and bake it. the chicken I'm adding some maple syrup to a bowl along with coconut aminos which is a great substitute for soy sauce if you're avoiding soy Dijon mustard and then I'm just dipping in some bone-in thighs with the skin on I like to get those nice and crispy with some oil and salt adds a lot of flavor again the idea here is to cut the vegetables a little bit larger so that they don't over bake while the chicken is trying to get done. I just pour the rest of the marinade on top of the vegetables and then cover it with olive oil and a ton of salt. So delicious. If you have a high quality salt, don't be shy about putting that on your food. It will give it a lot of flavor and it is good for you. Okay, now that I'm getting that sheet pan in the oven, it is time to do my first stretch and fold for the bread dough. I'm going to get my hands wet because that way this very hydrated dough, which is what I want here, I want those holes and some oven spring, a light fluffy sourdough. To handle it, it's, it's a little bit difficult, but if your hands aren't wet, if they are wet, it's very easy. Now, if you're brand new to sourdough, I'm just showing you here how the stretch and fold process works. Basically, you mix up the flour, you add the water starter and salt, let it sit for about 30 minutes, and then do a stretch and fold. And then about every 30 minutes, now I have very specific instructions here on a YouTube video as well as the blog with timing and whatnot. To be completely honest, I cover it with a wet tea towel so that it doesn't get dry and I revisit it every 30 minutes-ish. There are no timers being set. I'm trying to get about six-ish stretch and folds every 30 minutes or so before a bulk ferment. I have done this very haphazardly and it still always turns out. Before we make our next cozy winter meal, I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online, natural, and organic grocery store. 
I like Thrive Market because I can find things on there. I have a whole list of regular things that I purchase on Thrive Market that I either can't find locally or it's so specialty locally that it's very expensive and I can find it for a better price on Thrive Market. Now Thrive Market offers two membership options. You can pay by the year, it's a little bit cheaper that way, or you can pay month to month, maybe try it out for a while, see if there are some things on there that you regularly buy in your kitchen, but they maybe have a better option or a better price on Thrive Market. In the winter time, I love to pick up things like canned tomatoes, they have the Jovial brand, they have a Thrive Market brand that's really great. I also like to get the fire roasted variety. I get a lot of my bulk spices. Also, einkorn products. I can't get those here, but I love einkorn flour, einkorn pasta, and I get them all from Thrive Market. I like that on the Thrive Market website, you can sort by dietary preference. So if you are paleo, dairy-free, gluten-free, you can make sure that you only see those options, so it makes for a very easy shopping experience. Thrive Market is offering Farmhouse On Boon viewers 30% off your first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. You can use the link thrivemarket.com forward slash Farmhouse On Boon. It'll also be in the description box below. Okay, for this bread dough, I have a special plan. Something that I have been thinking about ever since walking into Panera a few weeks ago with my kids and seeing their bread bowls, I wanted to make homemade sourdough bread bowls. So I'm using my no need recipe that I always use. I'm doing it the exact same way as I always do it. So after it bulk ferments throughout the day before bed, I divide, shape, put in a bowl and put in the fridge. This time I'm dividing it instead of in two for two loaves into eight and I'm shaping it and putting it into bowls. Yes, it was extra effort. <laughs> However, I would do it again because it wasn't that much. It was a few minutes and it really impressed my family. It's not something I would do every day, but they all just were very interested in this whole process when they saw me pulling my small bowls out of the refrigerator. So I'm doing tea towel lined bowls and then I'm putting them in bags like I usually do. This is not glamorous. They just go in grocery shopping bags and into the refrigerator. Now the next day, I had a bit of a challenge here in that normally I make sourdough in a Dutch oven. And the reason that sourdough is made in a Dutch oven is because with it being closed and hot, you preheat that Dutch oven, it gets really hot, then you trap all of that heat and that steam that, that happens during the baking process inside the Dutch oven, creating beautiful oven spring, making the loaves go from really small to poofy and beautiful. But I can't bake eight little tiny loaves of bread in eight little tiny Dutch ovens because I don't have eight little tiny Dutch ovens. So I am doing an alternate method of using pie weights and rolled up towels in a pan. Now I preheated the towels in the pan and realized that that was kind of a bad idea because some of them were hanging over and got kind of burnt. It did work to provide a lot of steam. So what you do is you pour boiling water over the rolled up towels and then cold water over the preheated pie weights. Now you're supposed to actually do I think it's lava rocks, something like that, like food grade rocks in a pan. I did not have that, but I got to brainstorming and thinking, why wouldn't pie weights work? They're meant to be baked whenever they go inside a pie crust to weight it down. So I don't know. I will say though, after this was all said and done, it did work. So I think all of my steaming methods worked. I don't have the best footage of actually like getting all the steam in the oven because it was such a time sensitive process. I was trying to not let steam, escape the oven and not let heat escape the oven. I baked them at 500 degrees for 15 minutes and then turned the oven way down, I think to about 425 for the additional bake time, another 20 minutes or so. And I'm gonna fill them with a broccoli cheddar soup. So for a roux, I do equal parts butter and flour. So I did a half a cup of butter, a couple onions diced, half a cup of flour, cooked that for a bit added some broth and broccoli and shredded carrots and half and half and then put the lid on and allowed it to simmer a while. I added quite a bit of salt as usual, we do that here, and I taste test it to make sure everything's delicious, some black pepper, and then just let it simmer until it's time to cut into my bread bowls. <laughs> At 
first I was thinking that they were too small, but after pulling the bread out of the edges of the loaves, it had the capacity for a perfect individual size amount. Even some of the kids couldn't eat it all. I put cheese in the soup, cheddar cheese, broccoli cheddar, so delicious. But I was thinking as I was making these and seeing the size, okay, I'm probably gonna have to revisit this recipe and maybe divide my original no need loaf into six instead of eight, but it actually worked perfectly with eight. They turned out so good that I decided to photograph them for the blog. So there will be a specific how-to over there if you want additional instructions. All right, let's move on to the third meal for the winter menu. If you watch this channel a lot and if you're in my family, both of those categories of people might be sick of seeing me do some variety of tomato creamy pasta, whether I add shrimp or whether I add diced tomatoes or a tomato sauce or tomato paste. We just love, or I love, I don't know, my family seems to eat it, creamy tomatoey pasta and the winter seems like the best time to do it. I get sausage from my sister's farm and it all just comes together so well. So I add a diced onion to some butter, saute that a bit, add some sausage. Now with sausage encasing, I like to cook it first and then cut it up. It just cuts a lot better that way. I'm also adding some kale and fresh garlic. You really can't go wrong with fresh herbs, fresh greens, garlic and onions and sausage in any capacity combination thereof, delicious. I add the sausage back to the pot and stir it up with the onions and butter and then add some tomato paste. Now this will be what provides the tomato element to today's pasta. I'm also going to add some fennel seeds and then cook the fennel and the tomato paste just a bit before adding the rest of the sauce components. I am going to add a high quality white wine here. I do love using wine in cooking. I think it's so delicious. And just cook that until it's mostly evaporated. After several minutes, I add in some cream. Don't be shy with adding cream to a recipe like this. The more, the better in my opinion. And then of course, season to taste with salt and pepper and add that kale back in. If you have any fresh herbs, Definitely add those in and enjoy. This was probably one of my favorite times that I made this pasta. Again, we do so many varieties of it, but topped with a little fresh Parmesan cheese, you really can't go wrong with a creamy tomatoey pasta all season long. All right, well, I hope that I gave you some inspiration for meals that you can add to your winter rotation maybe even varieties of pastas, sheet pans, and soups. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe. I make new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home.